General Townsend, could you walk us through what you think China is doing in Africa? How does it threaten us and what, what are we doing to address it? They compete uh, with us in Africa. First of all, uh, China has made a decision, a deliberate decision to compete with America in Africa and win that competition. They compete primarily through economic means and diplomatic means. Uh, and you can see that there with their Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, they are investing everywhere across the continent. We don't actually have to meet that competition in every location head on. We have to pick and choose where we're going to do that. And uh, there are uh, countries where it's important uh, that we do. No, this uh, tells Mr. Uh -oh. Buckley one can deal what, constructively uh, with questions like the one you were asking about what about killing, uh, setting up a program to kill half the people in Africa. Yeah. I think we should, you see, I set up an even wider thing and I say this leads me to an absurdity. Well, I want to know why it's an absurdity. I don't think these graphs well, help. Do they? Uh, oh, you mean why your example is an absurdity? Yes. Well, we should, or, should or even explore these. that more, you or see. Even I these. think uh, you didn't describe how these people would be killed. This would, in my standards, be well, a painlessly. very important factor. Painlessly. Painfully, painlessly. painlessly yeah. uh, but would it be greater for you, Mr. Buckley, if you knew your country were doing this? No. Well, you see, not everybody would be happier. And how about the people who remained? Do you think they would be happy to have their brothers, their cousins, uh, killed off this way? I'm not at all sure that your proposal would lead to anything like a maximum of happiness. Well, uh, again, this would be a postulation. Uh, if, if one assumes that there are uh, uh, two people in a room both starving to death uh, and the disappearance of one uh, ends the problem of starvation for the other. We live in a world where everybody sees African people as just a coin to play with, just a pie to come and take from, just a place where everybody else can just come and do whatever they want. And it's crazy seeing these men Talking about Africa like it's some trophy, you know, it's a competition. We are in competition with China in Africa because we need the resources. They should not take more things from Africa than us. They do not see us as human beings. They literally don't see the African continent as a place that has human beings, you know. And it's ridiculous to think about. It really baffles me. But then I think we are in a time where I shouldn't even blame them. Like I said, they've never been questioned to pay for the atrocities they've been committing in the continent. No one has ever sat them down. They've never ever thought of even apologizing for the atrocities they've ever committed in the continent. So the entitlement comes from a long way where they were openly able to come and discuss about African lives, how they wanted to take down African people for them to have more space in the world. That's the entitlement I'm talking about. They feel entitled because they've never been questioned about looking into history and seeing that their ancestors and the things that they did or they still do that were crimes to humanity. The British have never faced justice. That is why they still run around the world pretending to tell us what to do. You know, one of the most painful statements that I ever heard in my life was from a British, former British Prime Minister, Tony Blair, when he said that Africa is a scar on the conscience of the world. How dare he? It is because we have never asked them to answer for the atrocities. The day they do, they will know that we are truly angry. They have never. And that is why some of us are very serious about this whole idea of reparations and proper apology. They have never apologized. And that's where the problem is. Majority of the time, having someone who never takes in accountability for the things they ever did or things they do, but they want to go on and blame other people as they are the problem. They are the ones sponsoring wars. They came and invaded other nations, but they never see that as a problem. In fact, they want to be praised. They want to be thanked that they came and did civilization in the places that they came and destroyed the things they've been committing to African people are things that are inhuman and were against humanity that need to be accounted for. You know, the way they don't want to forget about World War II, World War I, the way they don't want to forget about the Holocaust. When it comes to them when they were in pain, it has to be told. They do not want to forget about the atrocities that they went through. But when it comes to us as Africans, they discuss us like 
even if we lose lives it doesn't count so how can you deal with such a person it's so crazy it's like a mixture of a lot of emotions like i say all the time like you want to forget about things and then you keep coming across this kind of people and them discussing about you like you like you don't have value they don't see value in black people and if they are seeing africa as that trust me every black person is seen as the same so it doesn't matter all the time like i say if you are from america from europe from asia from the caribbean or from africa as long as you're seen to them as a black person they will see you as nothing but also because of the leaders that we have in the continent i would not say all of them because i'm seeing some change in west africa but in other parts of africa not so much how come in 2024 we still have the curriculum of the colonizers of the Europeans that came and enslaved our ancestors or us as a people. I mean, I come from a country and a place where if our leaders get sick, they have to go to America. They cannot build their own good hospitals in their country, which is crazy how Africans want to grow. We want to elevate, but even in 2024, our children have the curriculum of a white man that came and disturbed any kind of progress that you could have had in your time make it make sense make it make sense and this is why i saw on this platform it doesn't matter if it's russia china or any other group of people they are just groups of people that only want to come to africa for the resources they do not want you as a person they do not like you in fact they like animals more that's why they are able to pay millions and millions of money to go for safaris and go for animal hunting like they literally leave their european or american countries to come to africa to hunt down our animals just for fun so what kind of humanity do you want to get from such a person that protect their animals in their country you cannot just go and hit or do anything to a dog or a cat in their country but they are able to come and pay money to our governments who allow such things to happen to come and hunt down our animals and take them down for fun so how would they not do the same thing to you as someone who they don't even consider as human <laughs> do you do you get what i mean so i think it's time for us as africans to really step up our game and understand that no freedom is ever going to come by us you know looking at the wrong direction and all of this is to not even blame these people anymore okay they are part of the influence they are part of the problem but i would say in 2024 the biggest problem that we have are the people that look like me that continue to let the systems that don't let us elevate or grow as a people continue to be in place like i said the education the health technology a lot of things resources it's not like these people in 2024 just come and steal let's be real let's be honest let's stop pretending they don't just get on their flights and come and steal they come and sign things who signs the contracts who lets them take over the land who lets them come in and take literally everything that we own like i said as a ugandan i am not sure anymore if the airport our national airport of uganda i'm not sure speculations if it's ours because the rumors keep running around like it was given or sold to the chinese i am not sure but i hear stories so how are we going to always keep on blaming these people in 2024 when the biggest issue and the biggest problem we have today in 2024 is these ones and i'm not saying we shouldn't support those that come out to defend us and you know fight for a good cause i love what west african leaders are doing it's something that is admirable it's something that really gives you some sense of loving who you are as an african having these leaders in west africa that are coming up uh, in gabon in niger in uh, burkina faso coming out to stand on their ground and be in power of who they are and understand that we have to dismantle these systems that have always been kept in place for us to stay on the ground but we know we all know what needs to be done but we just have to keep pushing at the right people these are the problem but these are worst these are the worst problem that we have in the black community it's time for us as black community to start being competitive by working together like the animosity has to be taken down as fighting each other is the biggest problem the biggest biggest problem than this problem because the more we connect the more we have conversations the more we come together and work together we dismantle the lies that have been fed to us for the longest time of them seeing us as people that can never work together i believe that we can do better and we can grow as a people yeah guys that is it for me in the video let me know what you think about this i could 
could go on and on but i would like to also hear about your opinions let me know in the comments yeah thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe i will see you in the next video bye